What's up guys, my name's Brandon and Apple just released iOS 13.6 beta 2 to register developers and soon to public beta testers. So in this video, we're gonna cover what's new in this update, the battery life, the performance, the bugs, and much more. But of course we cannot get any further in this video without addressing the version number here. So Apple has once again renamed an iOS version after going through at least one beta release. They did it with iOS 13.4.5, they changed that to 13.5 after two betas, and now Apple does the same thing by changing iOS 13.5.5 to 13.6 after just one beta of 13.5.5. So we know that the reason Apple renamed iOS 13.4.5 to 13.5 was because of the COVID-19 contact tracing API, which required a new SDK, and Apple said that they had to change the version number anytime they use a new SDK. But for this version, the reason it got renamed is likely due to some new health features that I'll be showing you here in a few minutes. So I know it's super confusing. Apple is just continuing to confuse us with all these different version numbers, especially with iOS 14 coming out very soon, the beta. It's just very confusing for a lot of people. But anyways, we have 13.6 here, and you can see here the size of this update was around 336 megabytes on my iPhone 11 Pro. Of course, that size will vary depending on your device and the version you're coming from, but it should be right around three to 400 megabytes if you were on 13.5.5 beta 1. And taking a look at the build number, if we go to our settings general about 13.6, you can see there the build number is 17G5045C. So we do have a C at the end of the build number, which indicates that we should be getting at least another beta of 13.6 before it gets released to the public, which of course would make sense because this is technically the first beta of 13.6. But as far as any kind of modem updates or anything like that, the modem firmware has remained the same for the past few updates at 1.06.00 on the iPhone 11 series. So if you're having any kind of cellular connectivity issues, issues or anything related to the modem, those will likely not be fixed in these updates. So you guys know from watching my iOS 13.5.5 beta one video that really nothing was changed in that update. There was nothing visible that you could see that was changed. Everything was in the code on the back end, and it was kind of underwhelming for that reason, just because I couldn't really show you guys a lot. So in iOS 13.6, has anything changed? And the answer is yes. There's actually a couple of new changes here in this second beta of 13.6. So the first one is going to be what I think is the reason that this got renamed from 13.5.5 to 13.6, and that's because of some new health features inside of the health application. So I'm gonna pull in my iPhone 11 Pro Max here, which is on the latest public iOS release, which is 13.5.1. Then we have 13.6 over here on the right on my 11 Pro. So we're inside the health application on the browse tab. And if we go to the bottom here, not the bottom, just the bottom of the first section here, you'll see we have a brand new section here for data for symptoms. So before we did not have that on any previous version of iOS. And if we go into symptoms right here, you can see that you can report all these symptoms. You have abdominal cramps, you have you know chills, congestion, coughing, you have heartburn, loss of smell, loss of taste, all these different things that you can add in here. So maybe if you've been nauseous lately, you can click on nausea and you can see you can add in the data here. You have severe, moderate, mild, present, and not present. And you also have, you know, by the day, week, month, or year, you have about, you know, all these different symptoms right here. You can add it to your favorites. You can show all data. You can see where this data is being shared here as well. So this is very, very good for the health application and health kit in iOS. I'm honestly surprised it took Apple this long because this is definitely something that doctors and you know your healthcare professional will want to know about. What kind of symptoms were you having? And now you're able to add that into HealthKit and your healthcare professional is able to see any kind of symptoms you've been dealing with, which is again, very nice and a great step forward for the health application in iOS. The next new feature in iOS 13.6 is inside of settings. So if you go into our settings on both devices, go to general software update, you can already see a difference in the verbiage up top here. So it used to be automatic updates. Now in 13.6, it's customize automatic updates. And if you tap on that, you'll see we now get an additional toggle here in this latest update. So before it was just automatic updates and now it's download iOS updates and install iOS update. So it's no longer tied together. You no longer have to have, you know, downloading and installing in one. You can now control either download and install or download and install. So if you just wanted to automatically download the new iOS updates and install it on your own terms, you know, when you want to, you could go ahead and do that now and it doesn't install it automatically. So really great new feature. I think this is going to be 
really good for a lot of people because I've had so many people complain about their iPhones updating overnight when they didn't want to just because they had this feature turned on. So I could see this being useful for a lot of people. And then the final change in iOS 13.6 has to do with the COVID-19 exposure logging. So this seems to be enabled in more regions and more states now than it was in the past. So if we go to our settings and then go to privacy, health, and then you'll see you have the COVID-19 exposure logging right there. Of course, we do not have an application here in Florida and the US, but there are certain countries and certain states that are getting the apps rolled out so that they're able to do the exposure logging. But as for anything else new in iOS 13.6, I've not been able to find anything else just yet, but of course I will be using this software for the next week or so, and I will bring you a follow-up video if I find anything new or changed in this update. And of course, if you guys find anything, let me know down in the comments section below. But as far as the performance and battery life goes, performance seems to be about the same here on iOS 13.6 compared to 13.5.5 beta one, it did score a little bit lower on the Geekbench scores. You can see right here up top, we have 13.6 beta two, right below that is, I believe this is 13.5.5, yes. So, and then 13.5.1 directly below that. So you can see how they all stack up. You can see we got a 13.32 versus 13.34, so a slight decrease in single core, and then a 35.02 versus a 35.22, so a slight decrease in the multi-core as well, but they're so close and such a small difference that you're really not gonna tell any difference using the phone day to day. But you can see both beta one and beta two do score higher than the latest public release, which is 13.5.1. So that is consistent. So you can expect a slight, very slight performance boost when going from 13.5.1 to 13.6 when it eventually gets released because it's faster even just on the beta stages. So that is a good sign for things to come. But as far as battery life goes, battery life is going to be pretty much exactly the same as it was on 13.5.5, 13.5, 13.5.1. Battery life really has not changed much. Apple is not focusing on improving that right now. They're focused more on iOS 14 and optimizing that at the moment. But uh, if you have any kind of battery drain issues, it's probably because of something that you're doing. I don't know, maybe you have background app refresh turned on, or maybe you have significant locations turned on, so your phone is always tracking where you're going. There's a lot of different reasons your battery could be draining, and I don't think it's iOS related at this point, just because it's been tweaked so much, and battery life is great for me on all my devices. And as far as bugs go on 13.6 beta 2, I've not noticed any bugs yet, but of course I haven't been using it long enough to really see any kind of bugs. As far as mail goes, a lot of people were reported that 13.5.5 fixed some of their mail bugs. So I hear that every time though, so I'm not sure the validity of that and how true that is for most people. But as far as any other bugs or any kind of jitterness or any kind of lag or anything like that, I've not noticed anything wrong so far here with 13.6 beta two. So yes, if you're on the beta program, you should go ahead and update. You get these two new features and you know, obviously some bug fixes on the back end as well. You may even see some security improvements as well. So if you're on the beta program, there's really no reason not to go ahead and update. And as far as when we can expect the next beta, it seems that we're on a one week cycle now. So we could expect iOS 13.6 next week on maybe the 16th, Tuesday the 16th. And of course the following week is when we will likely see iOS 14 beta one on June 22nd. And of course there is always the likelihood of a public release coming instead of or at the same time as a beta. So Apple is really confusing right now with all the versions they have out, 13.5.1, 13.5.5, 13.6, iOS 14 coming out. There's really just a lot of different ways Apple can go with the release cycle. So it's really hard to gauge and predict what Apple is going to do at this moment. But yeah, that's pretty much it for iOS 13.6 beta two. I do like the new feature where you can go ahead and customize the automatic update so it doesn't have to install automatically, it can just download and not install. I think that's a great quality of life feature. And then of course we do also have some nice improvements inside of health where we can go ahead and report the symptoms so your doctor can see that and you know have a better understanding of what's wrong with you or you know what's going on or what kind of medication you may need based on those symptoms. So overall, 13.6 beta 2, a nice update. And again, the health features are probably the reason that this got renamed from 13.5.5 to 13.6. But anyways, guys, let me know what you think about this update down in the comment section below. If you found anything else new, let me know. How's your performance? How's your battery life? Talk to me down in those comments below. You guys know I love responding to you down there. But if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you guys are subscribed so you don't miss the next version of iOS, which who knows what it'll be at this point, 13.10.6, who knows? So stay tuned so you're not surprised when you see it on your device because you saw it here on the channel first. And of course, iOS 14 stuff coming soon as well. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.